Hi, I am Dr. Sridhar Kalyanasundaram, consultant neonatologist. I am in scrubs this time for a change of scene. I had a request from one of the parents to cover infants in the 8 to 12 month age group. That's a narrow range, so I will extend it from 4 to 12 months of age. This is actually a very interesting stage of the child's development, one of the most joyful phases for the parents. The child is very interactive, is starting to discover his or her abilities in different fields of development, right from movement to understanding, recognition and exploring tendencies. Object permanence starts coming into the picture a little later in this stage and uh, separation anxiety may be a feature and obviously uh, risk taking and so accident prevention becomes an important factor in this stage of the de development. I would like to mention a few salient points. Uh, obviously this is the stage when complementary feeding starts uh, setting the tone because uh, by four to six months majority of the families have started introducing foods apart from milk and this is what we call as complementary feeding. I will be discussing feeding in a different uh, video and obviously the presentation I have on nutrition covers this to a small extent though not specifically. Developmentally the child starts uh, being able to sit with support by four to six months of age and so it's a good time to consider getting a feeding chair for the baby when you see the baby having a straight back when they are being made to sit with support. The head control obviously is a stage which is before that stage and once you start uh, putting them on the feeding chair and strapped you have a small cushion behind them sometimes they tend to push back. so to avoid the neck flapping or anything like that you have a small cushion behind them you strap them in and their hands are supporting the front of the feeding chair and so they can sit on the high chair uh, with the support of the front uh, table they start exploring more at this stage so you can give them finger foods if, if you have started them you can give them small toys which they can poke and um, when you are cooking or staying in an area where you are working Putting them on the high chair keeps them in a reasonably safe zone where you can monitor them without the risk of their wandering off. This brings us to the most important topic of accident proofing. And I always stress to my patients when they come at the four month to six month stage that we should seriously consider accident proofing the home. Accidents can happen in the blink of an eye or in a couple of seconds and you can't predict them, that's what makes it very difficult. So the child can move suddenly, unexpectedly, they may pull something that is near them. They don't know whether it is hot, whether it is harmful, whether it is sharp. They may put things in their mouth which is not meant to be ingested. So these are things which we should anticipate and prevent rather than let it happen and then chase it. If you have an older sibling uh, for the child, for example, they may have toys like Lego or magnets which are small and if they are within the baby's reach, uh, they may put it in their mouth. Magnets are very dangerous because if they swallow more than two or three small magnets, they can stick together uh, taking the intestinal wall with it and causes the loss of blood supply. So there are unfortunate incidents where there is perforation of the gut wall because of this magnet related injury. Lithium batteries are another very important source of uh, accidental toxicity because these can release the chemicals into the intestines, the alkaline chemicals and they can cause gut wall perforation and damage as well. These can cause permanent damage. The gut may develop strictures, narrow it down and it's very difficult to remove them even if you do endoscopically. In general terms, foreign body ingestion, if it is not a sharp object, if it's plastic and it is small, it should come through. A small coin, for example, can come through. It's a rounded object, but sharp objects uh, like a safety pin, which is open, can be quite dangerous. It can cause gut perforation. And the other group that I mentioned are important as well. Choking hazard in small babies is not only for ingestion, it's also for 
particles getting stuck in the airway which is far more worse because it causes choking airway obstruction and can cause death even unfortunately so nuts a uh, small piece of nuts uh, even gummy bears or uh, chocolates or like smarties which are small and can break into chunks can get into the airway of the small infants i have heard parents say that my child is used to taking it but there is no getting used to taking it if they are not the appropriate age that is less than 2 years of age at least they shouldn't be given such uh, uh, chewable toffees or sweets or anything like that because you can't predict i mean they may be able to swallow it when you're closely monitoring them and they are focusing on what they are doing but children are distractible so the moment they get distracted uh, one accident is enough to result in a serious calamity for the same reason again i stress that parent should be aware of how to do first aid if the child develops a problem and teach your uh, nanny or any housekeeper to be aware of the process as well because you can't predict when things happen this applies to leaving them alone on a height again children often stand on sofas before they are ready to uh, stand on their own or crawl so standing on heights should be avoided if you notice it leave them on the floor uh, falling down from a sofa head down can be dangerous if it's a tiled floor standing on chairs they may imitate older children who are doing that so always supervise that standing on shopping trolleys i've seen many parents pushing the babies and they are standing on the other end of the shopping trolley they can easily dive down and these result in serious accidents uh standing on the car seats it's illegal obviously you have to strap them down in the car seat so car seats are important part of the child's safety don't ignore it it's illegal now to drive the child without car seats and in the early infancy you have to keep the car seat back facing because of their neck control not being there so there is no risk of uh, whiplash injury if you have a staircase you need a stair gate and that should be bought in time not when the child has actually started crawling so by 8 months of age before the child can actively move uh, independently you should be having a stair gate both at the upper end and the lower end because the child may crawl upwards and suddenly come down as well so it's not just upstairs you need to protect the downstairs part as well uh, electric points you get socket protectors because the child may put objects and get a risk of shock hazard and uh, you have to have rubber edges for the furniture where the child can bump the head on sharp objects and uh, if you have table clothes roll them up the hanging table clothes can be pulled by the child and any hot liquids on the table may fall on the child causing a burn never leave coffee or tea next to you when you're reading a newspaper you don't realize when the child is coming near you and pulling it on themselves so don't be distracted when you have hot objects just finish what you have put the cup away before you sit down to do anything else uh, don't use the mobile phone frequently in front of the child they learn from that so that uh, moves us on to the topic of screen uh, avoidance so 4 to 12 months of age is a crucial stage of the child's development and i normally tell the parents to keep them away from gadgets right from that age so that's when they start showing interest they are having a good head control they start looking at their siblings they start looking at the parents obviously a bright screen where the images keep changing very fast engages anyone so uh, babies are no exception and the parents unfortunately start getting excited at the child's own excitement and they start doing it more and more the brain is developing at this stage they are learning to comprehend how things work and unfortunately videos do not show the way things work in real life so they are edited they are fast they are made to be attractive and funny more colorful than real life more fast so the baby start expecting that in real life as well so you would notice that a child is very impatient they are prone to tantrums and actually language development also takes a back seat because the way they look at videos and the sounds is different from the three dimensional aspect of spoken language also the emotional part the contact with people empathy these aspects are reduced so screen time should be an absolute no no videos on tv 
on phones, on iPad, anything like that. So it's easy way to distract them, but it's not a good way. So if you have older children, keep the discipline that they watch a brief period of video when the younger baby is sleeping. And don't use your phones to calm down your baby. Don't be happy that they are able to figure out how to open your YouTube page. They are not meant to be doing that and they don't gain anything by doing this early. They have an intuitive brain. They can learn fast. But for the same reason, this may not be an ideal thing. And we do see many patients coming with features of autistic tendencies. And the moment they switch off the TV for three months, keep them off videos, they start interacting better. So we do blame autism increasing in the community, but part of the blame comes on us. There is also the hidden electromagnetic uh, field effects. So what we do is what our children follow. So we should minimize the screen time. We should have more physical activity, engage with them, do exercise regularly, eat healthy and set an example. So uh, the, the next component is obviously stimulation and language development. And we should start reading to the babies. The screen time reduction itself helps language, reading picture books to them, getting them toys like building blocks and cubes where you interact with them. And as they develop more their skills, you get form boards where they fit shapes. And the next stage would be jigsaws that comes after 15 months or so. So uh, you have to think of uh, intuitive ways of interacting with your baby, how to play with them and engage them. So we discussed briefly uh, the sitting in the high chair, we discussed accident proofing and we discussed uh, screen time and how to keep them engaged. The other important component is not to use a baby walker. Many parents take joy in seeing the child pushing the walker very fast and they think they are controlling the walker, but it's a walker that's controlling them because they're not really controlling the wheels are running on their own. And there is a negative effect of the walker in that the babies often push on their toes in their excitement and this doesn't help you develop the type of balanced gait that they are supposed to get when they start walking. So this may delay walking and we see different patterns like toe walking. You might say that many babies in their families have used it but if 5% uh, of the babies get a complication and no one gains from it, you don't need to use such objects and the other thing is accidents that may happen from a walker either uh, going and banging something or a tv for example or a table toppling over and having head injury same uh, as i mentioned for the shopping trolley in the supermarket so walker is a no-no the only type of walker you may consider is uh, when the child has started standing and holding and moving the pushing type of walker can be considered so if the child has delayed walking as well, that may be a tool that will hold the so baby may hold and push and support. The last part I want to say in this video is about uh, dental hygiene. So that is another important component that should start early. And unfortunately, in many cultures, we don't attend to it as seriously. So the pacifier, if you are using it, try to stop using it by three to four months of age, because in the first two to three months in the colicky phase is when pacifiers may help you. Uh, the benefit in sudden infant death reduction is also only in the first three to four months. So start weaning them off the pacifier by the time they reach three months or by the time they're four months, we stop it. The pacifiers unfortunately are more a support for the parents than for the baby and the parents get used to it and this leads to the baby getting used to it. And when you start try to stop it at a later age, it becomes more difficult. Start cleaning their uh, gums once they start reaching five to six months. Most of the time we start iron drops at this age and iron supplements can stay in the developing teeth. So get used to cleaning the gums even before the teeth comes. And once the teeth comes, you start using your fingers or a finger brush. When three or four teeth have erupted fully, you can start using a toothpaste. It's not age dependent, it's depending on the dental stage. So don't delay proper dental care because caries sets in quite early. And caries is quite a difficult problem to manage in children, partly because they don't cooperate with the treatment and partly because of their food habits. Don't give uh, semi-solid food in teats. Uh, there are uh, fruit suckers, which again can result in prolonged contact of the sweet objects like fruits with their teeth, which is not good. Avoid bottle feeding at night. Avoid sleep feeding or dream feeding unless it's essential and that should be a quick process and you should give water for the baby to drink 
in breastfeeding babies who are older you don't need to keep feeding them every time they wake up at night so over a period of time you have to decide to stop it and giving water as a substitute any change needs time and patience so don't rush to or don't be upset if the change doesn't happen you persist with it for a few days the child may tantrum you may face a few sleepless nights but ultimately the reward that you get is well worth it so uh, thank you for your patient listening i hope this is useful